Um, and uh, the format of the conversation will be that we first start from an aspirational point of view. Uh, why is, what is the perp, I mean why was this conceptualized? Uh, why do we need this green belt? Um, how will it add to the larger aspects of the galaxy? How it is a crucial aspect of the uh, plan? Uh, and from there, from the aspirational aspects, we will come down to how we can, what are the routes that we can take to manifest it? Uh, how we can ensure that it happens in a right manner? And how do we define the right manner? Okay. And from there, we will end with the what aspect. The what is the practicalities in a way. What are the things that need to be in place to ensure that we reach where we need to reach? So I would request each one of you to first give your, deliver your note from the aspirational level. What do you think should we as a community aspire for this green belt, which is, which is uh, three-fourth of 20 square kilometer, three-fourth of 20 square, which is 15 square kilometers of the plan. Um, and uh, I would also, while you reflect uh, your aspirations, I would like you to also look at it from two aspects. One is your individual aspiration and what do you think should be our collective aspiration. So to begin with, uh, we, I invite Prasad. Yes. My name is Prasad. Currently, I'm working for Lavani Dioroville and I was involved in farm uh, from my childhood. We own a farm in Kerala. I was a farmer myself. And uh, Banu and myself actually started a farm outside of Oroville because we couldn't find the land. Uh, they wouldn't allow us to do any farming inside Oroville. Um, from my individual aspiration is that the green belt should provide the food security for me, that is the most important thing, the most important purpose of green belt. It can be food forest. Some section of the green belt can be a forest. Mother only once mentioned the word forest in her entire conversation. But we have forest not only in the green belt, also inside the city. This is not right. So I wanted to show a small video. <clears throat> the justification the forester gives is that this land is not suitable for farming. This is the justification they are giving. It's my motherland. I know this land very well. It is actually an insult to say to a fellow countryman that this land is not suitable for farming. I want to prove my point to tell a little bit of a background history about this video. When people say this, this land people play is, nothing, no? mm. this land is not suitable for farming. Mm -hmm. And when I asked the farm group to give land to me for farming, they wouldn't give. Okay. So 10, 10 auto villains got together, including some new, newcomers. We are ready to put the money and buy the land in the green belt area. They would not allow us to buy. Mm. So we got fed up and I went outside of the master plan and bought a piece of land. Okay. And just all I did was fence this land. Then I went to Australia. When I came back, just to have a look what happened to this land, this overgrowth is phenomenal. I could not plow the land mm. because it was so high. I brought the tractor, you can see that, and I couldn't plow the land. Then I brought the JCB from road service. And then only I could plow the land. Mm. That is the kind of uh, growth that we have in mm. this land. And telling this land is not farmable is not right. Mm. Maybe you don't have any understanding about this land. Mm. So let's watch this video. Yeah. Can you? Yeah. This is what I saw when I came back. All I did was fenced it off. If you fence off any part of Auroville and allow, not allowing any goats and cows to come inside, this is what will happen. You can't walk through. It was almost my hip high. And now you can see that tractor gets stuck inside. Mm.
and then the JCB was brought in, mm. and I need to really rip off all this, mm. and finally we could plow this land. This is just phenomenal, the growth that you see in this land. Mm. To tell us that you cannot do farming, yeah. Okay. I don't know what to say. You have any word to say that? <laughs> okay. It's an insult. Mm. All right, that's one way to look at it. Thank you for sharing this video. Yeah, let's, let's finish this. Yeah. What a beautiful thing yeah, happens. Yeah. Look at this. This is a paradise on earth. Okay, I think we can stop it there. Yeah. Wow. Um, and uh, the format of the conversation will be that we first start from an aspirational point of view. Uh, why is, what is the purpose, I mean, why was this conceptualized? Uh, why do we need this green belt? Um, how will it add to the larger aspects of the galaxy? How it is a crucial aspect of the uh, plan? Uh, and from there, from the aspirational aspects, we will come down to how we can, what are the routes that we can take to manifest it? Uh, how we can ensure that it happens in a right manner? And how do we define the right manner? Okay? And from there, we will end with the what aspect. The what is the practicalities in a way. What are the things that need to be in place to ensure that we reach where we need to reach? So I would request each one of you to first give your, deliver your note from the aspirational level. What do you think should we as a community aspire for this green belt, which is, which is uh, three fourth of 20 square kilometer, three fourth of 20 square, which is 15 square kilometers of the plan. Um, and uh, I would also, while you reflect uh, your aspirations, I would like you to also look at it from two aspects. One is your individual aspiration and what do you think should be our collective aspiration? Good afternoon, I'm Louis, I'm a developer, I have been building Citadine, Sunshi, Terra Mata, La Maison des Jeunes, but I'm very concerned about the green in Auroville, mm -hmm. because I think Auroville has to be the greenest town of the world, so 50% of the land 50% of the land will be occupied by the green and 50% by the built-up area. It is the reason why we are doing project at Line of Goodwill to have a big demography part of okay. the development of the town. And for the green belt, I want to say something very special that nobody should know, but it was Roger at the time that he was meeting Mother every day when he has done the galaxy plan that Moser has chosen, he has had the green belt. And he told Moser, we need the green belt to make farm, fruit garden, vegetable garden for all the residents of the town. Mm. It is the reason to be of the green belt. Mm. And we, one thing important too, he was very much interested to have the development of the park. And we know, by example, we have just uh, between Citadine and the administrative zone a park. And you mm. can see how it is a park. Mm. There's a lot of green, of grass, of big tree giving shade. Mm. And we have to do, on the other side, the same thing. Mm. And it is a place, a park, where we can play, where we can sing, where mm. we can go in a water pond where mm. we can go at night because there will be light. It is an urban park. It's not a forest. This is very important for me. Mm. Um, and uh, the format of the conversation will be that we first start from an aspirational point of view. Uh, why is, what is the purpose, I mean, why was this conceptualized? Uh, why do we need this green belt? Um, how will it add to the larger aspects of the galaxy? How it is a crucial aspect of the uh, plan? Uh, and from there, from the aspirational aspects, we will come down to how we can, what are the routes that we can take to manifest it? Uh, how we can ensure that it happens in a right manner? And how do we define the right manner? Okay. 
and from there we will end with the what aspect. The what is the practicalities in a way, what are the things that need to be in place to ensure that we reach where we need to reach. So I would request each one of you to first give your, deliver your note from the aspirational level. What do you think should we as a community aspire for this green belt, which is which is uh, three fourth of 20 square kilometer, three fourth of 20 square, which is 15 square kilometers of the plan. Um, and uh, I would also, while you reflect uh, your aspirations, I would like you to also look at it from two aspects. One is your individual aspiration, and what do you think should be our collective aspiration? So to uh, my name is Bano. Yes. Um, we don't have a separate opinion then how the green uh, yeah keep it closer yeah green corridor should be and what its purpose is everyone will say we are that per green corridor is created for food security and to use it as um, a place for recreation and all that so we are all very clear on it okay so how we are going to do it and what kind of in what kind of manner we are going to use it is what we are going to discuss mm -hmm. i think and uh, what are your aspirations when you look at it individually? You are also living in a green belt, is it? Yes. I do. Yes. So how do you look at it? How does it? How do you contribute to it individually? What are your aspirations? Why did you choose to be a part of a green belt? Um, I didn't choose to be there, but I was placed there, so uh, I'm happy I'm there. Okay. That has given me a lot of uh, insights, you know. Mm. Of course, the land gives you and it develops you, it speaks to you and right. how to get this uh, working with us is mm. the matter that mm. we need to see. Thank you. Um, and uh, the format of the conversation will be that we first start from an aspirational point of view. Uh, why is, what is the purpose, I mean, why was this? conceptualized, uh, why do we need this green belt, um, how will it add to the larger aspects of the galaxy, how it is a crucial aspect of the uh, plan uh, and from there from the aspirational aspects we will come down to how we can, what are the routes that we can take to manifest it, uh, how we can ensure that it happens in a right manner and how do we define the right manner. Okay. And from there, we will end with the what aspect. The what is the practicalities in a way. What are the things that need to be in place to ensure that we reach where we need to reach. So I would request each one of you to first give your, deliver your note from the aspirational level. What do you think should we as a community aspire for this green belt, which is, which is uh, three fourth of 20 square kilometer, three fourth of 20 square, which is 15 square kilometers of the plan. Um, and uh, I would also, while you reflect uh, your aspirations, I would like you to also look at it from two aspects. One is your individual aspiration, and what do you think should be our collective aspiration? Perspective. Yeah, I will introduce myself a yes, little please. bit. Yes. Otherwise, what I'm going to say is that it's not going to make much sense. So, I will go back to the profession, which is software developer uh, in the corporate system, like everybody. So, I quitted this and went to the mountain, uh, spent a lot of time alone, and uh, from a social point of view, I came back to a low level of uh, society, uh, but uh, being very happy with the trees and nature. So, since you ask uh, what is a... Uh, how I see the aspiration level. Why? What is the purpose of the green belt yeah. and the park? I really say strongly that uh, um, nature has a tune. It's like playing music, no? So this tune is the turning fork for mm. a soul to evolve. Mm. So if we don't have uh, this vibration in the sufficient, sufficient quantity, quality around us, mm -hmm. uh, mind will again take over all humanity and we will fall into the trap that for the last 7,000 years we see what is happening. True. So 
at this time, I also want to say that I feel a little sad that uh, we don't consider, we consider it, but we don't talk enough here in the context of Orville. I'm here for 14 years. And Hello. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, much, much, much better. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the, the philosophy, and uh, I think we have to count on the philosophical aspect of what we are doing here, and I also put the level a little higher on the spiritual level. Mm. So I started with this frequency of nature for us to tune with uh, the universe, of course, but right. with our own, to, to remember who we truly are. Right. And nature by itself does it. Correct. We don't need to do that much. It's there. Mm. That's how I started my sadhana in uh, France, mm. not reading anything, just going into the forest and breathing and contemplating. And uh, I can really say the tune is there. Inside the life is uh, born again. So I came in India for spirituality. I spent eight years in Ashram, in Maharashtra and Kerala, and now I'm 14 years in Auroville, working in Buddha Garden Farm mm -hmm. and developing also, uh, doing the pioneer experience of uh, reviving a people uh, degraded land. This is for the heart uh, most amazing healing. Uh, that a human being can take care of because we all know that uh, the mind is carrying everybody away and uh, working in, with, a, with the soil mm. and if I can talk like that maybe people will laugh but the, the first message as Banu said the soul gave me yeah. the first message I got from the land is yeah. grow your roots mm. so 14 years in only doing that Growing your roots. <laughs> Growing my roots. And uh, of course it's very challenging. We have to perspire every day. Mm. <laughs> and this is also a challenge because uh, now with this modern civilization, when, uh, we have to work physically speaking. Uh, everybody is happy for one week, ten days, two weeks, but yes. after uh, going to somewhere else. Uh, yeah. So I'm still here. <laughs> and uh, I'm very much involved in the farm group as, uh, as uh, Prasad uh, knows. Okay. Um, I mean, uh, how to say it? You, you can sense how uh, our Prasad uh, see it. Um, I'm also uh, trying to keep quiet, but uh, I keep shouting them that we really need to make a huge uh, quantum leap in this, uh, in what we need here, because we are not even producing 20% of the oil we need. Right. I made the documentary, I think uh, now uh, most of uh, Aurovillian uh, mm. concerned by the situation I've seen on the Ashram farm, which is 20 kilometers from here. So they are 80, 90 percent self-sufficient for the, uh, yeah, <laughs> for the vegetable need, yeah. uh, oil, uh, milk and all this kind of thing, they are 100 percent sustainable. Right. With the same area, the same capacity, the same everything. So, of course, I will put on the table what is the difference between Ashram and Auroville. I think everybody knows that uh, Auroville challenge is uh, tackling the freedom and the self-discipline and the inner growth, not uh, waiting for a hierarchy to say what to do. Right. But I really think that here we have to make progress and to find one way or another to get, again, to get people yeah. uh, go beyond the difference and to, uh, to really learn to work together mm. as a duty. Because uh, in the farm group, I have to name it, to name yeah. it. It's very individual. Everybody play his uh, yeah. kind of king and uh, queen uh, game mm. and uh, put a tribunal everywhere and judge the work of others. And when uh, they are not happy, they really try to destroy the initiative, like uh, it happened to Assad, it that also happened to me. So I'm surviving, but uh, I think we have to find a way to stop this uh, monopoly mm. and to really work together in the right spirit. So my main message today, because I've been thinking two or three days, is not a technical message, it's a spiritual and philosophical, mm. because I've been struggling 14 years to create a good atmosphere mm. in the teamwork in the farm. I know the route is there. For our future, we have to recreate 
the uh, right atmosphere for the work. Means find a way to stop the fight, be friend, be happy, find the satisfaction in what we do with the right people. This is a key for sure of the future. Friendship, happiness, collaboration, synergy, all this kind of thing has to be put at the table. So this is the domain of spirituality and philosophy and we have to be to stop to be shy to talk about that. A good atmosphere is a good atmosphere. If in Auroville someone cannot know what is a good atmosphere, better to see somewhere else, you know. Right. I'm, I'm becoming a little tough. Yeah, okay. So. so if you may reflect, build upon what Pierre also rightly said, and it's very valuable thought. Well, I mean, oh. there's absolutely no conflict of my exactly. thoughts with uh, what anybody has said, especially yes. what Prasad has said. That, And, of course, from my perspective, although I'm not a farmer or uh, a green belter as such, though I live in a farm and I've planted maybe 50 trees in my life, and it's clear that farms and green is required in every city, especially, but what kind of green should it be? Should it be invasive species? Should be, it be fruit-bearing species? Or should it be... Uh, yeah, basically, like... So that is what uh, my, uh, how do you say, approach would be, that we need to see that what we plant is mm. useful for the collective, as like what Prasad said about going towards food sufficiency. Mm. I mean, if something which this COVID whole thing in the last two years has shown mm. is that we cannot overlook the importance of being food sufficient mm -hmm. and we have enough opportunity in Oroville to get there of course we might not be able to produce everything that we consume yeah and because some of the things that we consume don't grow here mm. but we are rich in certain fruits that we can mass produce mm. put it out in the market and with what we get we can buy so basically like in my opinion agriculture or agro yeah. Uh, what you call the whole aspect should be a major part of our economy. Right. Then we come to agroforestry. Yeah. With if we can plan, you know, like maybe 200 acres for teak, mm. or 500 acres for hemp, because all these things are immensely valuable. Not only hemp is a regenerative plant; it mm. increases the productivity of the soil with every uh, crop. Every crop. It, does, it gives more back than it takes. Right. So all these things, if we can start thinking about and mm. include in our whole like green planning, mm. I think we have a wonderful opportunity to show the world mm. what a city that the world truly needs is all about, is being self-sufficient, right. buy food, right. having the right crops. And because right now what we have is basically thickets, which were all this acacia was planted to hold the soil together. Right. And in some places, they are too congested for letting anything other to thrive. It is doing its work great, but that, is the first, that was the first step, mm. to hold the soil uh, to prevent it from mm. being washed out to the sea. Mm. And I think that part has been done. It has, that, that aspect has been taken care of. Now right. is the time to go in for more planned planting, clearing and, you know, like in a planned way, in by sector by sector. And also, like, there are immense, how do you say, opportunity for redistributing or uh, decentralization of food pro uh, production. We can have, like, even individual communities producing certain things. You know, like, for the collective, it doesn't need to be farmed. Like, well, somebody could just be producing uh, mint mm. or uh, basil, you know, like, or something like, basically, like, that's a food production is not only in farming, uh, in a, like uh, limited to farms, it could also, communities could help in. Tomatoes, beans, so many things that individual communities could be producing and, you know, like sharing and growing towards food sufficiency and uh, abundance. Because abundance is all about sharing. If everybody grows something and shares, then we are abundant. And right. I believe that is probably the right way or approach to look into okay. and develop into. So if I may develop on the thought that you just mentioned. Um, okay, you touched upon the very functional aspects of the Green Belt, food security that it should meet. But then like Pierre said, it's not just that function which is very visible. There is this very intangible power that the nature holds. Um, when we walk in the 
cycle paths which we feel. Uh, like he said, being in tune with the nature offers you so much. Sometimes you realize, sometimes you don't realize. And even in the previous session on abundance, we talked about, it's not just about financial abundance that we have generated, it's about this, uh, this uh, beautiful ecological abundance that we have generated. There is so much value to it, isn't Correct. it? Correct, absolutely. At the same time, I see a lot of, in a lot of places, because they have been allowed to just grow wild, I see there is violence happening in the forest between the plants because they are fighting for the light, they are too close. You know, they are bending out of shape. They are, okay, like <laughs> nature, yeah, like, uh, there's, I mean, they are just too, uh, uh, how do you say, closely packed to each other. And, but if we have, like there is this man. You are saying uh, that they are also fighting for territory? Well, they are fighting for sunlight, they are fighting <laughs> for sustenance, you know, and uh, that is limited, you know, like, and, well, and so that could be avoided because sometimes, like, if, even that is maybe, I mean, there is this one man I was, uh, I would refer to, uh, Jadav, uh, I think he's from Assam. This one man single-handedly planted, uh, planted like yeah. over 1,500 acres of a forest. Mm. And it's beautiful. I mean, it's like I'm, I'm not saying that uh, we did not we do anything less here. Mm. But he made sure that the trees were so, uh, what, what he calls, in distance. Yep. That today there are elephants and rhinoceros can move around in those forests, mm. in, in his forest. So, because, but here we did not probably went, uh, go uh, to make forest, we were planting initially to hold the land. And a lot of, you know, like saplings just came up. But yes, uh, absolutely, like a good forest, trees anyways uh, recharge you. You right. walk through a forest and you are recharged. So we can absolutely have to consider that they are as important. In fact, I would say they are more important than humans on this planet. They do a lot more to for environment than we do. True. And so we have to have that component, but in a planned manner, not over planned. Yeah. But to see that they are not uh, in cro or not fighting among them themselves either, because that again, on an energy level, that yeah. is not really helpful. Okay. So, so uh, on the thought that yes, perhaps they they were there long before humans arrived. Uh, Pierre, I will come to you and perhaps will stay after us also. Uh, but in our city, when we are consciously designing, this is a city which is planted in a way. The founder envisioned it, and it's a vision-driven city. Intentional city. It's an intentional city. It's a conscious city. Um, in that sense, it is, is it not primary purpose that we, we see a very um, direct, um, uh, we, we talk, when we talk about ecology, we say, okay, we planted so much of trees and this is giving us so much, uh, you know, ecological benefits. But then we import everything from outside. You know, the, the vegetables are coming from Uti. What about the transport cost of that? Mm. What about, uh, you know, other um, houses that we, 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 we sprawl? Because of that, how much is it affecting the nature? If, if, it, if only we could have planned our stay. We are only right now 2,000, not even 2,000 adults in Oroville. And you mentioned that we are only 20% self-sufficient, you know. So it's not even in comparison. And then, and then we need to plan for 50,000 residents. A farmer knows that. Uh, I really want to say, because I made an article, maybe you have uh, read, huh? it has been published in uh, this uh, issue of uh, Oville Tomorrow. I don't know if you read no, it. No, not yet. Okay, so I want to start this topic by saying that uh, our farmers are good farmers. They have a lot of knowledge in so many aspects. Wonderful. It's really a concentration of knowledge. Maybe I don't give names, otherwise I will make uh, people jealous or fighting who is the best and all this. They say all of them are very or, yeah, yeah, yeah. They know the job. No, no, I get it. And, and, because and, and, they have acquired and, so much knowledge over the period. Definitely. And they are passionate about it. The problem is not there. The problem is uh, so we have the resource, human resource, financial uh, resource, because every, every farmer has a maintenance, I mean, at least 
then uh, the fencing can be subsidized by Auroville. We don't pay tax. We are on solar. I mean, the, 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 the setup is quite good. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we make a comparison with the ashram, on 150 acres of the ashram farm, they rotate 10 acres by 10 acres. They have 20,000 banana trees, and they are producing uh, uh, so 20,000 banana trees, and they are producing 3,000 banana by day. And all this banana orchard is by drip irrigation. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, so here... Uh, Last time I look at our statistic, we were doing three tons of banana by year. Mm. <laughs> mm. So, um, yeah, something has to be done, and of course I put this on the table so many times, and always the uh, same answer is coming, you know, banana is using a lot of water, blah, 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 and yeah, <laughs> but if some people are doing it 20 kilometers from here, why don't we do it? Of course, no answer is there. Uh, and then uh, the, the, the need of uh, other uh, uh, fruits like watermelon, pineapple, is just colossal need. 300 kg of watermelon by day in Orville, at least. Mm. <laughs> so, I mean, in, already uh, now we made uh, quite a lot of progress in, uh, in this topic because uh, people have been working in identifying our need, which has not been done for years and years and years. At least the team or Chad, myself, uh, and a few people uh, work quite hard in identifying our need. But now, uh, to, put, uh, to, to make a work plan uh, to, to match it, that's a difficulty. And uh, that's really the big, big, big challenge and difficulty. Maybe I don't, uh, I'm really happy FMC finally uh, asked the farmer uh, a work plan. And they came with such a ridiculous, sorry, uh, I can't stand in front of everybody, such a ridiculous answer, which is insulting. I don't know if you have seen it, but me... <sighs> so there is no work plan still, <laughs> because they don't, uh, they think, I don't know what they think. I, 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 I don't, I yeah, don't yeah, want too much to yeah, go yeah, yeah. into uh, in this. You can see I'm refraining. Yeah. So I want to go on the positive uh, aspect yes, of yes. how to... Uh, how to make everything work together, to bind it together, and to make people stop the uh, conflict and uh, move forward. Because once again, the resource, the capacity are there. So, you have been working on this for at least a dozen uh, years in Oroville. I'm 14 years here. 14 yeah. years. So, you said we have land, we have the necessary resources, yes. and we have the know-how. You are yes. saying that all, I, the, I say that. all the farmers Clearly. are brilliant Clearly. in terms I of knowledge. I don't think anybody will go against that. Person. Yes. So, Pierre, what, what in your view? Yeah, you think somebody? No, I don't think. No, I mean, it's good. What I see, you know, what I hear from uh, What Pierre is the challenge also? according to you? See, yeah. There are... It's not just on the practical level. There yeah. are multi-layers within the farming and the forest community. So we need to go back and get these layers dismantled and see and how and in what way we could organize, reorganize ourselves to produce what is needed for the community. Mm. So when I was looking at the farm group's website, there wasn't much information I could get out of that. Okay, There was just around 375 acres of farm and 35 farmers and 25 fa 21 farms, you know, and 50% uh, of the need of the community is only produced. That is from your side, okay? <laughs> so when I look at it, I'm also comparing myself. I come from a, a farming family background. So I also have noticed I've been in their field and in the field of all the productions and sales and all that. I could comfortably say like a farmer who has one acre he's self-sustaining himself with that one acre but here we have 400 acres almost 400 acres and we are not able to produce food for 2,000 people and a floating population of around 2,000 let's say 4,000 so what's going wrong so for that we need to have informations that's where we are lacking Okay. Transparent in information. You, you are in housing, if I may, if I may ask you. Um, the, the, yeah, the, you question, the question you asked Banu was, yeah. do you agree with Pierre that we have the resource to do what we need to do? 
<laughs> I think I think we do. <laughs> you want to say something? No, no, because I wanted to answer to the question of the lady. Okay. What is the difference between the green belt and the green? So the, that was the question. More in detail. So the green is all which is part of the town itself. In the five kilo, square kilometer, there will be half of the building area and half of green. And the green are tree, bushes, flower, grass. If you know Auroville, you go behind town hall, you go to see Citadine, where Luigi, which passed away now, was a great landscaper, and there is so much green. On the facade, there are creepers going green. And everywhere there is green, there is flowers, there is trees, there is even urban farming, so all around. So this is the green in the town that we want to develop. This is one thing. And of course the green belt is something completely different. It is it can be a part of forest, it can be farm, it can be fruit garden, it can be fruit uh, vegetable garden, this can be. So this is I don't know if I have answer to your question. Uh, Oh. And I, I wanted to say something about what Pierre said okay. about the atmosphere. Mm. When I came in 71 to Auroville, yeah. there was a circulation of a book on the ferries because Finhorn Garden was starting. Okay. And the people were working with entity, vital entity, you know this, Pierre. And we asked Mother, we went to see Mother and we asked her, so is it real? And those entity are existing? And she said, yes, it is at the vital li level, and you can connect, and they will help you to grow uh, fabulously all the nature. And I am sure many people in Auroville, in any, any place in the green, in the green belt, it can be uh, a, a relation with its uh, vital entity, which help and give a very pleasant atmosphere and a protect atmosphere. It's just a, a detail. Okay, I want just to. A, a detail. Okay, I want to come to you uh, for one more aspect of 1970, the early years, Louis. Um, first step uh, in Oroville was to hold the land, somehow manage the land, and and it was necessary because it was degenerated at that time, correct? Uh, and it was also necessary because there were very few hundred Orovillians for these many acres. So somehow there had to be some way to hold the land, protect it, manage it. So how did this entire forestry or this eco-village idea came about in Oroville? Do you remember when is this narrative which started? Is it, was there a conscious decision by few people saying that we don't need city, we will only plant forests everywhere or because they grew forest, they got attached to it and they don't want to let it go now. How do you, what is? No, at the time I came in 71, there were 30 people, and we were all uh, uh, planting trees. Even if we were walking to other place, we were in the garden, and we were doing everything, and planting trees. And it was a full desert. There was no one tree. So we need to plant trees. So we have planted millions of trees. Okay. But the reason to plant trees was to hold the earth, because all the rainwater was taking all the main good uh, the top soil. Top soil to the sea. Mm. So we say we have to do uh, the barrage, pas one, one. barrage, banding, and we have to plant tree. And it, the idea was to plant tree that will take out very easily, and we have to build the city, which is now more difficult. But it was the original idea was to hold the uh, land, to hold the earth the topsoil. This was the reason. Of course, after in the green belt itself, it was planned to be tree and to be forest and to be like this. But right. all the rest, all the rest of the place of the town, yeah. it was temporary, waiting for the building to come. But uh, some people forget that we have to build a city. Mm. Okay, okay. Uh, Banu, um, time is short, so we'll try to, I have a lot many things to ask you. Um, the philosophy of work in Oroville and mother's insistence on physical work. How many of us are right now 
presented with an opportunity to go and work with the earth, the nature, the plants, the garden. R right now, it seems as if we have demarcated, we have made, we have assigned, oh, this is a forester, this is a farmer, this is a city developer. Like he said, when he arrived, he planted trees. So, a forester might want to come and build. So, why do we in our community have this, uh, what do you say, compartment? compartment and how do we break it, Banu? Uh, I have been wondering about it lately. And when I look back, when Matrimandir was built, the whole community was engaged in building the Matrimandir. Now, as you very well point out, we have compartmentalized ourselves and we are not engaging much in physical work. So I was thinking, why not, when ATDC is planning for building the crown, just invite Aurovillians to spend one hour, two hour, how much ever they want to, and participate in building things collectively, so that this isolation of, oh, I'm here in this office, oh, you're in the forest, oh, you're in the farm, I just do whatever necessary in that place, is being eliminated, you know. We need to invite. Invite. Invite or call, you know, there is bring in this initiative back Correct. as we work collectively. Wonderful. Yeah, this okay. is how I say it. Pierre, you want to add? Okay. I want to add into, into this. <clears throat> I firmly believe that a space calls the pe required people by themselves. Okay. Like we were building, we've sent out the word, we are building a city. So of course, we had an influx of architects. We just, I mean, I think we are the city which has the most number of architects in comparison to the entire population. They just didn't come, because it was the energy that we sent out. Similarly, if we sent out the energy for the purpose, if we are saying, all right, now we will be food sufficient, we need to build, and people who are interested in farming would come. Yep. People who are ready to work with the hands would come. Okay. If we send out the things, okay, that we are a, a city which, is, which needs, how do you say, uh, consultants, Right. Consultants will come. People who just want to work on the computer will come. So it okay. is the intention that we send out brings in, draws in correspondent er, energy. Fair enough. So. Yeah, Pierre, and I want to ask one more question to you also. Quickly, if you may want to add to what Banu said. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm, uh, I'm okay, okay with that. But I think that what um, is missing here huh, is a practical aspect. People will come. For sure they will come. The whole world would like to have a real experience. Who deny that? But we have to welcome them. And uh, in, 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 the, in the farm group, we have been putting, I have been putting, not only me, but on the table, we need to create some accommodation to welcome the people and to make them work uh, on the farm. There is maybe millions of people who like to spend six months, one year, in a greenery, working with the ground, you know. But where is the welcome? Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Clarity ourselves. How do you want to bring in your narrative to welcome people? We will. We will. That's the idea of having this conversation to bring clarity. So, Pierre, to add to that, uh, you are working on the field, yes. and you said that you already think that it's a very uh, potent, knowledgeable community of farmers. Yes. Uh, and then, how do we? We, we whatever Auroville is known for the innovations. It came in the 90s. It came in the 80s, right? Yes. You talk about now we see that the China is greening the deserts. Uh, Israel mm -hmm. is totally self-sufficient, even though bulk of their land is, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. fallow, yeah, right, no? correct? Uh, and there are so many other innovations. Like there are multi-layered cultivation in Singapore. Um, where is the innovation? Where is the research and development? And where is the aspect of sharing knowledge? I hear so many volunteers who want to come here and work. Um, and then is there a conscious way of sharing knowledge in Auroville, do you think? I mean, the first part of the, que uh, the, the, the question and my answer will be the means we put at the disposal of uh, making this happen, you know. Uh, the finance are, are really tough, you know, the farmer are also uh, struggling, even if they have subsidies, maintenance and all this, it's really not easy to maintain a garden and to develop it, especially when you need to generate, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. no, it's not that easy. So, of course, uh, Israel, China, uh, not Turkey, but uh, Libya, Libya. Yeah. have you seen Libya? Uh, 
I mean, Isaiah Gaddafi, but uh, it's amazing what he did in the desert. Huh? His beard is just unbelievable. It's just like, wow. So we have also to make a budget and really intention is there, but I don't see in the town hall for the last 15 years people who have been uh, really, uh, sorry, huh? <laughs> yes, uh, no, 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 I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, supporting uh, this uh, financial uh, thing, right. no? Without finance, how we, we are going to... We need to invest a little on the R&D. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I don't see innovativeness, you know. It, maybe it is there in small pockets, but it's not visibly outside. Yeah. I, I think it, it, it's... It's, it's not in the right proportion, everyone. for sure. Yeah. yeah, it's... I'll just add to it that, in, well, from my film background, we used to have a saying that creativity lies in the budget. The, the budget decides how creative you can be. And similarly, it's here. We mm. have always been fighting for or like scrounging for finances. Mm. That's primarily because we haven't explored all the options. As I feel it, I might be wrong. Yeah. But I, as I see that Auroville is a project that cannot be built individually or just by donations and, you know, like uh, small donations from people. Right. More government institutions have to be involved. Okay. You know, like, I, I'm, I'm sure China is not doing by himself without the support of an international community, or for that matter, Israel. Right. We have to involve many more governments in various sectors. India, as the host country, can only take on <coughs> one aspect or two, maybe mm. the infrastructure, the basic infrastructure, the land. Mm. But all other sectors, you know, like the food production or the farming is one, sports, education, all other sectors, if it is divided among, you know, say, like 10, 12, the top nations of the, of the world, then, the, you know, like, the budget is there. And then the mind starts thinking. Then people start getting creative. Once we have the means, then we, the, yeah, the canvas opens up. Okay. Right now, I mean, as, as, as I see it, every single farm has been set up on individual, by individual money. You know, because Oroville, the central fund, did not have the capacity to support them. So it comes, it's a natural thing that if I have invested an X amount, I would first like to get it back before I start giving it to, something to the community. And that might take a long time for some, some farms, which is why, you know, like farm cafes spring up and all that, and maybe like the farmers are more interested in doing courses and uh, workshops than farming because they have to get back their investment into it. Okay. Uh, let me take the analogy of the filmmaking itself. I believe somehow, a little bit I differ in the opinion, that I believe creativity lies in the constraints. Look at Satyajit Ray and look at uh, all the you know, expensive films that are being made. He did whatever he managed with his meager resources, incredible. So, uh, second is also the need is the mother of innovation. Invention. In invention. So, the, we, if there is a will, there is a way. So if Correct. we want to do, I think that's where this, the idea of this conversation is also to bring out a collective aspiration so that we all take back something and look beyond just the necessities, the need, the immediate. I, I want to also uh, to hear from you. Um, we look at the challenges and you said we have everything, but we are still not producing. I want you to re reflect on this from this lens. We, we look at the challenge of ownership in Auroville. We all think that we are stewards, that's how we, we say, that's the lip service that we provide, but we all hold our land. Perhaps the farmers, I'm, I don't want to single out anybody, it's, it's, it's not just farmers, it's everyone in Auroville, it's also the industrialists, uh, that we all hold far more than what we can manage and we don't want to let it go. Well, that is the basic, I think, I mean, ultimately we are here to fight against our own intrinsic nature. You know, that's what we are doing. Right. I mean, rest everything is just an excuse, but these are things that we have to transcend in ourselves, and it's not an easy task. So I holding mean, is a problem in order? Well, holding is a very human, I mean, like, I think we are the only animal that hold. Squirrels <laughs> do, but they, they forget <laughs> where they have planted it. <laughs> <laughs> Dogs not a hoarding. <laughs> no. What about the bones and the <laughs> well, burying? <laughs> they, they forget it. You know, like most of them, they, they, they don't have, you know, so, I mean, yeah. So, but you Our farmers also forgot that they have land to till. <laughs> <laughs> so, but ultimately that is a human, uh, I mean, yeah, that's our nature that we have to 
yeah. transcend or I mean, why, why we yes. have we have been put here by mother okay. to like and that is the, uh, the real fight right and for some it is not easy you know like it is and understandably so once you get the feel of this like the control of a piece of land or a pe it is not easy to let go of that control mm -hmm. it is that um, and it is okay i mean this i do, i would not judge it judge it but it is that is the state we are in right. but those things can change if we have a supportive say uh, community some how do you say guidelines because mm -hmm. these things a human nature is cannot be transformed in isolation by oneself without the community support so this has to be hand in hand the community has to help individual to transcend the in all these kind of this natural deficits and in it has to come around that a transformed individual helps the community to ri raise its level of doing things so okay. it is a kind of a circle super last thought because time is running out um, what are your immediate uh, what, what do you think as a community we need right now to manifest uh, the green belt that four parks and the 50 percent unbuilt area in the Oroville and you work with eco service also what do you think we need as uh, you know how do we look at also the waste and the management of our green belt to utilize it in a right well, way? Well, I mean, okay, that's a one wonderful question. I mean, first and foremost, I don't think Oroville can do anything by itself unless we include the bioregion in our larger plan. Mm -hmm. Be it waste management, be it development, be it food sufficiency, be it beauty, be it uh, aesthetics, we have to include them. Mm. And uh, the first part of your question was, how do I see what is, as, as of now, I think we have to build back our trust between interpersonal trust mm. somehow because th that unless we do that mm. things will go slow I mean of course it will happen we have somehow lost the trust because of maybe we did not have um, but then it takes us from this uh, present uh, topic but I felt that we lacked a system of justice to fall back upon which created the lack of trust and everything else was just a uh, a repercussion or a ripple of a ripple effect from there we need to get back the trust of our bioregion people that we are here for something larger and we need their help as much as they would benefit from us unless that trust is established unless we get the support of our immediate neighbors we cannot talk really about human unity if we are not in unison with our five kilometer radius people you know, and so that is where maybe we should start with win yeah. back the trust from our bioregion people I see the waste like I keep telling everybody that we cannot make Oroville clean unless all our surrounding villages become clean at the same you know like with the same consciousness our what you call water channels and uh, canyons are getting filled up with garbage every day it's not possible for eco service to do all that by itself it is not possible for Oroville to do it all by itself without the support from the state and the government agencies and international help so we have to open up ourselves to the possibility of involving humanity as a whole we can we are not all the representatives of humanity as a whole there are a lot more out there and we have to include that and so that is how be it in any sector be it education be it uh, like what the green greenering breed waste management hmm. in everything we need a larger participation of than what we have gathered till now it's a wonderful start that we have made and I feel that right now we are in probably phase two the phase one was keeping the land holding the soil all that which the pioneers did absolutely hats off to them some of the stories are incredible that people just planted 5,000 trees you know like in a week and some people just carried water in buckets all day that was their job just going to and those days they had iron buckets the metal buckets not the plastic ones so I don't think any other generation would be able to do what they did but now is the time for another generation to take it on to another level which would probably have to be you know like so it has to be continuous succession <coughs> of building up and yes we need more like-minded people to come in people who are ready to put their hands in the land work with the land and but this is all about how what kind of how do you say uh, aspiration we sent out energetically which will draw in corresponding energy Good. Good. 
Uh, thank you, Sumit. Pierre, if you can. You, Sumit. <laughs> last thoughts, along with the trust regeneration necessity that he talked about, how do we also look at the practical aspects of keeping the land, uh, you know, the topsoil maintained and the water is water is another crucial aspect. No? We didn't speak. We didn't. Actually, have that's what I was going to say. If you will not say, <laughs> I will say uh, we forgot to talk about the water. Yeah. So. I've been talking with the water specialist. The, the first thing that really connected me in Auroville, uh, with Auroville is a uh, dynamization system, uh, or aquadin dynamization system, and uh, the quality of water. We have a French Nobel Prize called Professor Montagnier. He did amazing research on the memory of water. And uh, I, I think uh, I can say that uh, because Louis knows Bagamandas, Bagamandas was in Morocco talking next to uh, this Nobel Prize. Uh, in France, we made a mind blowing uh, documentary which shows that only with a, listen carefully, only with a memory of water, we can reproduce up to 90% of the DNA, only by putting sound wave into the water with a PCR with a water that is in form with sound wave we can reproduce a DNA at more than 90% of what it was before so just to talk about the water and the importance of water we, we say we have been talking about the forest but I think it's very important to uh, think about the runoff of, uh, of the water more or less, uh, with what I understand of the topic, is that uh, even with all the variation of uh, monsoon, we, we, we should be able to uh, hold uh, the water that is running off uh, direction then Divanam and all these things. So already we did the Kaluveli tank, which is a good, good, good uh, thing, but we can do better. Yeah. We can do much better. Uh, we had, uh, uh, I'm not an expert in the topic, but uh, some uh, Eurovidian made a call, a very big engineer from all around the world to make uh, water harvest. Uh, yeah, very, uh, I mean, Gilles Bourico, uh, him, I think he did really a good work on uh, the water harvest uh, uh, that has been ordered by the TDC at the time to uh, kind of avoid the desalination plant. That's a big topic. So, yes. I mean, water is really, really, really important. So if we collect better the runoff and make a good uh, water harvesting system, uh, that's, uh, I think, uh, a part of the answer. But again, at the philo philosophical level, um, my, uh, my uh, deep wish for Auroville is the emergence of the collective wisdom. Mm -hmm. That's my way of talking about human unity. I would say, unfortunately, we are not uh, ready for that. So, uh, Summit uh, say, including the bioregion and all this, I, I have nothing to say about it. But somehow, I think we need some training to we need some training to open the, the mind of, uh, let's say, the farmer or the people involved in this project. Uh, to be able to, to tune to this uh, collective wisdom and to this uh, project. Because for now, people, I'm 15 years in this uh, nest of uh, difficult uh, situation. I'm sad to say that uh, authority is needed because uh, by themselves they cannot manage. And uh, I'm really also very sad to say that uh, the self-sabotage is in the farm, in the, in the farm uh, area self-sabotage, so means they cannot hold themselves, means uh, uh, for me a good leadership will be the situation, the, the solution. Not nice to say, but that's my thinking. Yes, thank, uh, thank you, Sumit. Pierre, if you can, you, Sumit. <laughs> last thoughts, along with the trust regeneration necessity that he talked about, how do we also look at the practical aspects of keeping the land uh, you know the topsoil maintained and the water is water is another crucial aspect I think, yes. so I would like to ask to sp speak about the water because the lake around the matrimonde yeah. is the base of the water system of Oloroville 
Even mother, when we were meeting the, in the 70s, she was already speaking of desalinization. So there is a planning of making a plant of desalinization, and the lake would be filled up with this water. Rainwater will not be enough. So the desalinated water will be there. It will be given for all the agriculture, and with all the place in the town, we will but it will be a paved place. We will recover all the rainwater, put in a, in, a, in a tank, and keep them always to put in the lake, to refill the lake. But what I want to say, it is the base. It's not only aesthetic around the water to, to have a silent aspect, but it is to, to give the water for all the town. So it is a must, the lake, to be done and to be developed. This is one point. So I want to come back when we are singing Moser, where we have problem in the 70s. We have 50 people and we have human problem already. <laughs> and we were meeting her and she was telling something and she was saying, when you will be 10,000 people, it will be much more easier. So we have to be all together to help this to happen as soon as possible. So what I feel is that 90% of the Orovinian, of the residents of Orovin, are moderate people. So we have all to be united and to find a good way to be together and to work together to build the city that Mother wanted. Thank you. Sometimes Mother leave things unexplained. And she said, Matrimandir is the soul of Oroville. And then she said, the land is the body of Oroville. And I believe the lake is the life of Oroville. And uh, I'm fortunate to work with the lake team. Uh, we finished 10% of the lake, a uh, test lake, and now we need to do 90 more. And our aspiration, in particularly the Matrimandri executive's determination, is to complete the lake for Mother's 150th birthday. I wish that comes true. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Um, coming back to my conclusion, I think Sri beautifully said, <clears throat> when it comes to economical problem, it should not be any Western model. It has to be a communal model which is native to India. What happened was that in 1976, we started giving money to Orovillians. We call it maintenance. <coughs> That's where things went wrong. Then we said that, okay, you earn money through whatever activities you are doing and give 33% to the community, 66% is your choice. That is where things went wrong. I am saying, when you are working for Oroville, you give 100% back to the community. In return, the community looks after you. That is the spirit of Oroville that we want to establish. We need to reset this one. So I feel this collective aspiration needs, needs to be strengthened. We need to start working in Oroville in the spirit of service not in the, in the spirit of commercial interest. Wonderful. Interest. Wonderful. Thank you. Banu? When he said Sri Aurobindo, I don't have anything else to say more on it. Um, but yet, when we are discussing and what is not working, it's coming from the space of care and uh, for betterment of our community from a larger perspective, you know, we are, we should be moving towards, uh, you know, more um, like 50,000, right? And we look at, we need to start working from today onwards so that we are ready, you know, step by step, we are going there, reaching there. So all this needs to be planned a little bit and then rearrange ourselves. We are not going back to that the pioneering days where it was, um, how to say it, necessity for doing certain 
kind of planning. Now we need to shift gear. So this we need to do it with the wider perspective. That's it. Thank and, you. And as Sri Arbindo says, by communal model. <laughs>